Hi, so today we're going to look at broadcasters. I've been putting off doing a video about broadcasters because they are very complicated. It's like an entire parallel universe of high scripting. Almost all the sort of UI event driven stuff we can do with regular high scripting, we can do through uh, broadcasters as well. So to get into it is without sort of covering ground we've already covered is kind of tricky. Although there are some unique features to broadcasters as well, which is probably where we're, we use them most often. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to give a kind of overview of the idea behind broadcasters. I'm going to show you an example. Uh, and I'm also going to show you how we would take something that we usually do one way with HighScript and then we'll do it with broadcasters. And it's a very simple example, but it's just to give you an introduction to how broadcasters work. In future videos, we'll go into specific instances where you'd want to use broadcasters to do things that we can't do any other way in highs. So let's uh, get started. So the idea behind a broadcaster is it allows us to link different parts of the interface together. Um, usually we'd use callbacks, but using broadcasters is a little different. So the kind of idea is called the observer pattern. So usually when we do something with a callback, we have a thing where we click a button, let's say, and then the button says, go and do these actions. With a broadcaster, the button click doesn't necessarily trigger an action directly. Instead, we have things called listeners that are looking at the button, and if they see that the button changes, then they carry out their actions independently of any action that the button might also be doing. So let's start with a simple example, and we'll look at how we do it traditionally with highs, and then we'll use the broadcaster method. So we're going to take um, a concept because I want to give you a kind of an analogy for broadcasters. So imagine um, you've got you, you've got some sort of social media account, something like Facebook, and you're very popular. So you've got three friends, and you want to tell them all that you're going to go to a party at a certain time, and they can come along if they want. So you've got two ways of doing this. You can either go to each friend and send them a message and say, "I'm going to this party. I'm going to this party. I'm going to this party." or you can just post it on your Facebook feed and the three friends can look at it and then do what they want if they want to go to the party or not. Okay, so let's start with the first example. So we'll add a button and this will be our sender. So we'll call this BTN sender. And I'm just going to pull this out a bit more. There we go. So this is our sender. This is the person who's got some information to share, and then we're going to add three friends. So we'll just call these BTN friend zero, BTN friend one, and BTN friend two. I'll just change this text up here. Okay, so those are our three friends. So now, traditionally, we'll click the button and we will notify the friends. In our case, we're going to turn on the buttons when they're notified. So let's get a reference to our sender and a callback definition for it as well. And we'll get a reference to, oh, I've really got word wrap on here. Let's see. Uh, there we go. And we'll get a reference to our three friends as well. So we'll use content.getAllComponents, and that will grab all three of these buttons and put the references into an array. Okay, so now in our uh, callback for our sender button, we can send a message to each of the three friends. So we could say btn friend 0.setValue equals the value of the sender. And we could do the same for the other two. So now we hit a five and the sender sends its little message to each of the friends one at a time. Okay, now we can do something a bit different. We can do a, a group message and use a loop and say for i equals zero, i is less than btn friend dot length i plus plus. And replace that with i 
Uh, we could even use a four in loop here if we wanted to. Okay, so now it's going to do the same thing. So I just wanted to throw that in there. We're doing a, a, the equivalent of a group message using a loop. So this is how we do it traditionally with the sender sending the message specifically to individual buttons. And it knows those buttons exist. It is saying, you're going to get a message, you're going to get a message, and you're going to get a message. Now, in the version with broadcasters, which we're about to look at, the sender doesn't know how many friends are going to see the message. Um, it, it's independent. And that's one of the great things about broadcasters is it lets us divide our code and um, decouple it. So things don't have to be aware of each other, which makes code more maintainable and uh, a bit easier to uh, extend and add new features to. Okay, so let's do this in a broadcaster version. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing, but this time we're going to use a broadcaster. So um, there's actually some tools in Hive to help us with broadcasters and to help us write them. We're going to write it out by hand first, and then I'll show you the tools. Uh, that way you'll get a bit of an idea for it. So we'll start by declaring our broadcaster. We'll just call it uh, BC for broadcaster, and that's going to be equal to engine dot create uh, broadcaster. There it is. Okay, and we have to give it some. Um, we have to give it a parameter, and this is an object. Now, what we put in this object can vary depending on the type of broadcaster we're using, um, uh, and what we want it to do. There's all kinds of variations, but they all get an ID. So we can call this something like uh, sender BC for sender broadcaster. The next thing it gets is some arguments or parameters. We're going to uh, call this args. And this is an array. And basically, we're going to have a function later on. And it's got to take some parameters. And that's what we're defining here. So we're going to define component and value. And you can add other data like uh, metadata and tags. Uh, we're just going to leave that empty for now, but you, you can add additional data. So now what I want to do is what's called attaching the broadcaster to the sender button so that they're associated with each other. So that will be bc.attach. And you can see there's all these different attach functions. We're going to go with attach component value because we want to be uh, notified when the value of the button changes. There are more generic ones you can use that are equivalent to control callbacks, and there's specific ones for uh, specific components. But in our case, just the value will do fine. OK, now we're going to give it the component ID. So we'll create an array, and we'll put it in here, btn sender. And the reason it's an array is because we can have one broadcaster for multiple buttons. So you could add additional IDs in here. But we'll just leave it with the one. And then we can add some optional metadata, and it's optional, so we don't have to, but we'll call it, um, we'll, we'll put something in here. We'll have a uh, sender watcher. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, now we're going to get these buttons to listen for changes that uh, the sender sends out. And we do that using what are called listeners. So we'll do bc.add. Uh, you, we could just add a listener, and a normal listener is very much like a control callback, but we're going to have component value listener, and that means when it receives a message, it can change the value of the component that it's assigned to. So in var object here, this is where we're going to tell it which uh, buttons we want to listen. So it's going to be btn friend 0, btn friend 1, and btn friend 2. OK. And then, again, we can give it some metadata. So we can say um, this is the friend listener. Actually, we're listening to the sender, aren't we? So maybe we should call it the sender listener. And then, let me, uh, give us a bit more room here. And then we're going to give it a callback function. And this function is going to take three parameters. It's going to have index, which is going to be the index of 
the component that triggered the uh, the function. So we're going to have component, and this is the sender component, so we know which of the senders triggered it, because remember I said you can attach the broadcaster to multiple uh, senders, but in this case there'll only be one. And then we'll have value, which is the value of the sender. Okay, and then here we have to return a value, which is going to be assigned to one of the friend buttons. This is, so this is the component value listener. So we have to return a value that we want assigned. Now in this case, we want it to match the sender value, which we're getting here. So we can just return value. And now I'll hit F5. And hopefully we should have the same behavior we had before. And there we go. So this is totally different now. So the sender isn't communicating with the friends. It doesn't know they exist. But the friends are aware that the broadcaster exists and the broadcaster is aware of everything else. So I'll just show you a little improvement we can make to this. So currently we're having to add in the IDs for each of our friends here. And that makes it not so scalable because that means every time you want to add a new friend, you have to go in here and edit the script and add a new ID. So we're not going to do that. We're actually going to get our component references into an array like we did before, btn friend equals content.getAllComponents, btn friend. Okay, I'm just put a little um, comment there. And then instead of passing in the individual IDs, we can actually just pass in our array btn friend. And now it doesn't matter how many friend buttons you've got, this will be populated with them and they will all respond. So if we add another one, because you've just got a friend invite and you've decided to accept it, and you want this friend to know you're going to the party as well, so we'll hit the sender and I didn't name the button correctly, it should be btn friend. There we go. And change that text. There we are. So now that friend gets informed as well. And we didn't have to change anything in the script. We didn't have to change anything. We didn't have to update a callback for the sender like you might have to if we'd done it the previous way. Um, so it's all kind of automated. It makes it really easy to extend your project. Now, this is it for this example. It's a really simple example, and it's a very sort of contrived example. So you may be thinking, well, I'll just do things the way I usually do. And that's how I thought when I first got into using the broadcaster. And with simple examples like this, that's often the case that it is just as easy to do it the traditional way. But as your project grows and you've got components in different namespaces and doing different tasks, but that need to link back to others or be aware of the state of other controls. Uh, explore broadcasters, they're a really good option. Things like, um, say you've got a master bypass button that's going to bypass all your effects, but each effect is doing its own thing. That can be a really good use for a, uh, for a broadcaster in a button scenario like this. So another example where I've used broadcasters is my downloader app in Rhapsody. So I've got things like if the user is downloading a library, I don't want the user to be able to log out or try and uninstall a library or do various things that might interfere with the download. So I have all these things watching a download broadcaster and as soon as they see the download broadcaster, they'll disable themselves. So the download functionality doesn't need to be aware of all these other little things that shouldn't happen during a download, but they are aware of if a download is occurring. Um, there's other things like uh, the EQ panel. There's a lot of stuff you can do with that if you use broadcasters. Same with the preset browser. So there's all these little bits and pieces throughout highs that uh, the broadcaster is really well geared for. Okay, now before we finish up, uh, we're going to recreate this example, but we're going to use the built-in tools in highs to do it so we don't have to write it out by hand. So let me show you that. So I'm just going to comment out this code. And I'll delete friend three. So we're back to where we were, no functionality. So I wanted to show you a tool in Hives called the Broadcaster Wizard, which makes this a lot easier to do. It automates some of the stuff so we don't have to write out all this uh, code to set up the broadcasters. 
Unfortunately, that wizard isn't loading up on my um, Eyes installation on my laptop. So through the magic of editing, I'm going to jump to my other system and uh, I'll show you it over there. Okay, so I've jumped across to my other system and now I'm going to show you how to do the same thing that we've already done manually, but using the uh, broadcaster wizard in highs, which is going to do some of the legwork for us. So we're going to go to tools and click show broadcaster wizard. And this is where we start and it's going to kind of guide us through the process, but it helps that we've done it manually and also that we can go and look at documentation if we need to, because there's some bits in here that um, you just kind of need to know what it's asking for. There are little help buttons we can click, which will give us more information. And sometimes you'll find bits like this where you can add more information. So we'll give our broadcaster an ID. We'll call it BC Sender. I think that's what we called it before. And we'll click next. And now it's asking what capabilities do we want the uh, sender to have in our case, our broadcaster. So we're checking for the component value. So when we click the sender, we're checking for its value. But you can see all these other things we can connect to as well. Component properties, things like the size of the button, the color of the button, the button's text, any of the properties. Mouse events, so you can add mouse callbacks to buttons and other controls that don't usually have mouse callbacks using uh, broadcasters and all kinds of other stuff. But we're gonna go with component value Click next. Now we need the ID of the component. So in our case, it's BTN sender. And it comes up in this drop down. Hit, hit enter there. We can add some metadata if we want. I've forgotten what we put before, but we can put sender broadcaster. We'll hit next again. And now we want to choose the target. So what do we want to have happen with the listeners? So in our case, again, it's going to be component value. We want our friend buttons uh, to have their value change, but you can just have like a regular callback if you want, where you can do anything, or you can change the properties of those, those components. So there's uh, various choices to go with, but we'll go with component value. And then we need to put the IDs of those components. So that's going to be BTN friend zero, comma, BTN friend one comma btn friend two. Uh, we can give the a function ID for our callback. So if you want to call a specific function, uh, what we did before was we had the function in line with the, uh, the listener and that's called an anonymous function. And if you don't put anything in here, that's what you will get. As it says here, this will use the given function as an ID, leave this empty in order to create an in place anonymous function. So we're not going to put anything in there. And for the metadata, we can put um, friend listener. And we'll hit next again. Okay, and then this is the code it's going to give us. And you can see this is pretty much what we wrote when we did it manually. So if we click, um, we, we can edit this if we want to adjust it, but it's exactly what we need. So we're just going to click finish. And this is going to copy it to our clipboard. So now we can paste it into here, hit F5. And if everything is set up correctly, I've got a typo there. Where's my typo? Uh, BTN friend one. Oh, okay. I forgot to put the one there. There we go. So now everything works. So as you can see, the broadcaster uh, wizard just helps us to write this code and it sort of shows us what options are available. It just makes it a little easier than having to write this all out manually. Okay, so now through the magic of editing, I'll go back to the other section that I've already recorded and uh, we'll carry on from there. Okay, so we're back with the original handwritten version. I just want to show you the broadcaster map that uh, helps us visualize what's happening with our broadcasters. Now with a simple example like this, it's going to be easy to see what's going on. But when you've got complicated uh, broadcaster setups running throughout your code in different namespaces and doing different things, it can get a bit... Um, a bit tricky to know what's doing what, what's connecting to what. And the broadcaster map is going to uh, help us visualize that. So it's just here. So you click this little triangle to pop this out of the side of the script editor. And we'll just pull that across. So it's saying it's uh, inactive. So we're going to click this power button here to activate it. 
And I think you only have to do that once, and it's sh- it's saved for future um, openings of highs. And I'm not going to get into too much detail about what we have here. We're just going to look at the map. There are some additional functionality you can see along the top there, um, but I'm not going to go into that. We're just going to look at this. So for each broadcaster you create, you're going to get a line like this, which is going to show what's happening in your project. So what we see is in the middle, we have the broadcaster, sender BC. That's what we named it here. And so that's the ID for that. Sending into that is the sender. So the sender is inputting a value and we can see the value here. So if I change the value on the UI, see that value there changes to one. Spin that in a bit. We can also see out on the right side of the broadcaster, we can see the listeners. So we can see friend zero, friend one, friend two. And this little bar here represents the value for those. So we can see that. is there. Now if we have more than one listener, they will stack here. So let's add another listener. I'm just going to duplicate the one we've already got because you can have multiple um, listeners for the same components. So there we go. So now we have another listener and they're both going to do the same thing because I just duplicated it. But you could have them do different things. And this is a, another powerful feature of broadcasters you're essentially getting multiple control callbacks. Um, and they don't have to be control callbacks, of course. You could have them change properties of control. So you could have it when the sender's clicked that the friends bypass themselves or um, change their color or, or whatever you want them to do. You can have them change their properties. It's really uh, powerful stuff. And the same goes on this side of the broadcaster with the sender. We could duplicate the sender, um, the attach, where is it, this line here. We can duplicate that. Hit F5. So now we get two senders going in. Obviously, you wouldn't do this in a real project, but you might have two different buttons going into one broadcaster. And as you've probably figured out, you can have the senders going to multiple broadcasters as well. So this middle column could be stacked with multiple broadcasters. Um, so let's do that quickly. Let's just duplicate this broadcaster. And we'll call this um, sender BC1, BC1. And I'll just attach it to this one here. Hit F5. So now this one is, so now the sender is going into two broadcasters. This broadcaster isn't doing anything though because we don't have any listeners on this side. But hopefully you get the idea and this graph will fill up and fill up as you add more broadcasters. Uh, you can click this button here to jump to the line of code where you're assigning these listeners as well, which can be quite useful when you've got a, a big um, a big broadcaster map and, and same with this so you can find broadcasters as well. Okay, hopefully this was a nice introduction to broadcasters and hopefully you can understand why I've been putting it off because it is such a, a big subject but they are so powerful and so wonderful um, they really will change the way you write your projects and in some cases there are certain things that you can only do with broadcasters in most cases, you can do things multiple ways, but the broadcasters can um, make it easier. Okay, so thank you for watching. If you do have any questions or comments, please leave them below the video. I'll leave this snippet on um, Patreon for my higher tier Patreon supporters. And if you'd like to uh, check that out, uh, I'll put the link in the description below this video. All right then, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.